So we'll set up an experiment. We want to know how strong the beam is. Um, so we'll do an experiment, a four-point bend experiment, where we're applying a load here, and we're measuring a deflection. So we'll use some sort of device to measure that deflection, a uh, linear variable differential transducer or some such thing. So the output from that will tell us the deformation and we know how much load we're applying here because we're maybe putting more and more weight on there, just increasing the weights and measuring the deflection and eventually that beam's going to break. So we'll end up producing a stress strain diagram like this. So there's the strain the stress and the stress has units of Pascal and the strain doesn't have any units at all and if we have a material that obeys Hooke's law we will get Hookean behaviour and we get a linear relationship between stress and strain. <coughs> a lot of materials do follow this but then will slowly move away from that ideal relationship, but I'm not going to go into those sorts of complications. Now, at some point, we'll get failure. So here we're assuming that we're getting what's called brittle failure. The material deforms in a linear fashion and then fails catastrophically. I'm not going to go into the details of toughness and all that kind of stuff here. I'll talk about that in another lecture. <coughs> so this is basically illustrating the principle of a material failing and having a certain stiffness and we get that stiffness by dividing the applied load, the stress, by the strain. So stress divided by strain gives you the stiffness of that material. Now stiffness isn't a terribly scientific word, so we actually define it by something called the Young's modulus, or sometimes we just call it modulus. And the units of modulus are going to be Pascal over strain. And because strain doesn't have a unit, the units of Young's modulus are the same as the units of the applied load to Pascal. So we're hoping that we can measure the stiffness of this material and there will be a relationship between the stiffness and the failure stress. So that's the assumption that we're making for producing a diagram that will tell us that the indicative property of the stiffness of the material is related to the strength. And this is what we need to do for machine grading.